Pastor Terry, I believe you had a scripture. I was in the study, and Pastor Fogg asked me if I had a scripture, and I've been reading from Hebrews, and it was talking about the subtitle is the certainty of God's promise, and that in that it's talking about the unchangeable things and of God being unchangeable. And the scripture I had was, "We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure." It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where Jesus, who went before us, has entered on our behalf. Let's turn to number 408. 408 for our first hymn. the Lord. Number 305, an old song of testimony. Number 305. 
and that is old to uh, to this generation. The Lord raised me, number three hundred and five. the Lord. I like what I hear in your voices. Number 323. Hallelujah. It's like to say I'm glad that God raised me. It's a truth there. You said you like what to hear in her voice. Is that by God's grace, I like what I feel in my soul. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's Jesus. He's the one that made me whole. Amen. Amen. Don't you think going to be saved tonight? Glory. Amen. Glory. Praise the Lord. Glory. Glory. Oh, that's a wonderful, Steve. That's wonderful. I was thinking a while ago, I, I missed some that aren't here, and I thought, now, Jesus, if you could, we probably could have held them tonight if we'd have had this fire Sunday out of more. Yeah, that's it right there. The reason, if we'd have had this fire Sunday, they'd have been here with us tonight because the congregation is a whole. Now, don't be discouraged. Be encouraged because the fire's burning. But it, I just had thought that. Lord, if we could have had this fire, then we could have held. There's people always on the edge. Yeah. And it depends on our fire as to whether we hold them. Those of us that know enough to be at the post of duty depends on our fire and our victory. And, oh, I see, I could hear some victory voices in the choir. I didn't know where it was coming from, but I said, Jesus, hallelujah, these old songs, somebody's singing them. I hear the victory in their voice. But Terry had it in his soul. You've got it in your soul. It's putting greater spark in my soul. Amen. Helping me. Helping someone out there. So I trust that God will burn, let this fire burn so brightly 
that uh, it will um, do something uh, for us all the way into Sunday. So when the French people come back, when the French people come back, they'll roll back in Wednesday night because those of you who know to stay on the main line have the fire and the victory of God that will keep them, that will feed them. Otherwise, the lambs die. And we've got more lambs than we have sheep, mature sheep. Yeah. The most are lambs. So those that are mature sheep will have to keep the fire. Amen. God will help us yes. to keep the fire. Somebody besides the preachers, they have to keep it or die in front of everybody. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, this is a good song here. Standing on the promises yes. of Christ my King. Amen. up and sing it again. If you felt that in your soul, I started, I said, oh, Jesus, Peter stood. I said, Lord, you're talking to others. Help them to get up. Boy, Tim was next. And then I saw the others get up. I said, oh, God, that's helping us. Boy, that put the fire in the place. When Peter, when you got up, the power hit me and it never left me one time. It only increased when Tim, Janet, and the others got up. Then the power of God increased in my soul. 
All right, now if you, you start singing again, the choir's already up, they got the advantage, but these got up on their own, said, I'm standing on the promises of God. I said, Lord, help them to get up. You're talking to them. Help them to get up, Jesus. You're telling me about it. Peter's up, already up, and the powers hit me, and they were faithful. Boy, the strength that put into this service. What that's done for them. Well, what that's done for you in the days to come. Glory be to God. All right, now if you feel that way in your heart, do it as we start singing. Let's sing the, the first stanza. Yes. Forgive me because I want to stand up. Well, sure. You're forgiven. Get right up. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. That's good. That's good. See, God was telling others about it. See, Peter. Yes, Peter. I wanted to hear you testify. Yes, sir. Endeavoring to stand on his promises. Amen. And I want to ask the Lord to forgive me and you all to forgive me. I should have stood as soon as Pastor Steve said what we were saying. That's good. See, but see, I wrestled it, oh, but Peter, please help me get up. Peter, that's so good. Yes. That's that's obedience in this service. Oh, God's yes. put the fire in the Wednesday night. Yes. He, God's done it all by himself, as far as I'm concerned. Yes. It, we owe it all to him. Yes. All right, we're going to sing. There's others. Yes, yes. You had the same lady. Yeah. See, God was a telling us. I started to have somebody join Peter. But I said, now, Lord, you tell him. Yeah. And they started. That's they started right. getting up. Praise the Lord. That's it. I should have stood up also. Yeah, all right. You felt it too. Glory to God. Mom. Mom, that's it. See, God's working. Glory be to God. All right, Stephen L. The rest, now, we're not to stand until the song starts. If we feel that, we might all want to join. Let's just see how it goes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. First stanza. Here we go. Yes, sir. Standing on the promises of Christ by me. that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear to sell. That goes along with our sharing out of the book of Hebrews tonight. By the living word of God, I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. Oh, it's just so beautiful. I want to point out one other thing that in those of you that obey God all on your own, the power was stronger when you obey God on your own than even when we all stood. Oh, yes. See, in that, in that moment of self-denial and testimony of victory, right. the power, power and the witness of God That's was right. stronger then That's than when we all stood. Oh, yes. now, now, if each of us had followed after Peter started, then the power would have got stronger and stronger and stronger. But you see, the time was past, yet... The preacher had said, so we got up. But I just wanted to point that spiritual lesson out to us. That will help us. Oh, what do you think? God helped Peter, Tim, Janet, uh, Marty. Brother Ron Kidd was up. See, I couldn't see him over here. Brother Kidd. And uh, somebody over here got up. Nancy Bradford. Yeah, somebody over here got up, though. Mac got up. Maxine. And the Lord was speaking to others. See, this is good. This is great. Terry, you obeyed God and testified the fire of God poured out of you. Oh, this is great. Who knows? Revival could start in midsummer. That's right. Yeah. Anytime you got a revival and you're 
personal soul. It's great. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, does anybody have a leading from where, where we should go from here? Yes, fine. Yes. Amen. You know, I remember you telling me that. That is good. Yes, Brother Jim. Jim, that's it. It's all forgiven. The Lord will take it away. It, it's teaching us a little lesson about services in the future. You know, I said, I was sitting back there thinking, now, Jesus. If any, if, any, if any of our beauty has taken away from the Spirit, then take it all away. But, he, boy, he proved just the opposite in the service. That is, that it's in our, in our obedience. I said, we'll go back and sit on steel chairs in the gym if it'll help. Well, what moments after that, Terry was on his feet. See, I was asking him, now, Lord, what's the key? What's the key to revival in the summer? Well, he was telling me, son, I've given you and your people this beautiful building. You just obey God. That's what I want you to do. And then when Pete started, the victory started as you dear ones got up. I just wanted to point out how the Lord, how much more power was in the service when you obeyed God on your own than when we did it as a group. Yes. Jesus told me not to do it. He said, let them stand on their own. Now, Pete stood. I was afraid he'd sit down. But as long as he was standing, the power of God went through me. I knew if he ever sat down, he'd quit. But, Jim, you can tell it. You can verify it. God was working. And I said, now, Lord, you're telling others to stand. Help me. But if I stand, the preacher, of course, leads the way. I've got to stay seated. So I prayed to stay seated and left Pete up by himself. And then others start obeying. Now, this, you say, well, brother, what real lesson is this? My dear ones. Oh, if this happens Sunday, if you're a faithful Sunday, these people say, so you're, you're here because most of you know the value of staying on the fire line through thick and thin. But there's a fringe crowd on Sunday that's as precious as they can be. They need this fire and this victory. It'll do something for them to sweep them over in the victory column. Oh, I'm excited. I said, Jesus, what are you going to do with us here? This is so great and so wonderful. Trill, you can prepare to sing some time in the service. I don't know if it's now. Or in a little while, can you tell? Amen. Amen. Glory. Sure glad, said she didn't know where she'd be if it weren't for the promises of God. Praise the Lord. Thankful. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad that God speaks to me. <laughs> So oh, Nellie, that's so wonderful. Just to see her walk in and that was a great experience. Praise the Lord. Should we have a prayer or should the trio sing? Trio, it's time for you to sing. See, I couldn't tell. Be seated, congregation, the trio will sing. Glory. 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 That's one of the few times in the last few services that I didn't know what to do. Except that earlier in the service, Jesus said trio. Isn't that wonderful? But see, I could speak about it. Raymond said, now. He hollered, now. The Holy Spirit witnessed to Steve's heart, now. And the trio's going to sing. I think it's great. Is there anything that you have on your heart? Now, Steve's just talking to me about it, so we'll see. Well, this is brand new. You did. You've we never done it last time you sang? We did it last time. Love every different kind. Yes, that was it. Okay. That was on my heart. That's good, because we were undecided. This so will help us. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Love of a different kind, friends, that's what he had in mind. Teach the scribes and Pharisees, love of a different kind. He came down out of heaven, the Savior of man, to preach to scribes and Pharisees throughout the Holy Land. Love of a different kind, friends, that's what he had in mind. Teach the scribes and Pharisees love of a different kind. He was born in a town called Bethlehem on a cold winter night. The wise men of the desert saw the holy light. Love of a different kind, friends, that's what he had in mind. Teach the scribes and Pharisees love of a different kind. 
He preached throughout Jerusalem, he even raised the dead, fed a multitude of people on a dozen loaves of bread. Love of a different kind, friends, that's what he had in mind. Teach those scribes and Pharisees, love of a different kind. Love of a different kind, friends, love of a different kind. Love of a different kind, friends, love of a different kind. Love of a different kind. Man, now go go back to the one you hope. Go back now to the one, other one. You had. Did you have your open to another one there? Okay. We got one that we went through tonight. But, uh, it's a new one too. What? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> he wrote this back when he was a sinner. Oh, Bill? Yes, and he put it wrote on the Wrote it when he was a sinner? Mm -hmm. Wow, he, wonderful. Uh, was going into a recording session, and uh, they said he had to have uh, a gospel record. Oh. So he sat down and he wrote oh. this one out. <laughs> so you mean the recording people said you've got to have a gospel number? And Bill sat down and wrote this one out? <laughs> what, the horse? <laughs> it's entitled First Prayer? <laughs> oh, this great. Where's your music? We don't have no music. We never have no music. <laughs> oh, we got some words. <laughs> we didn't have words. Why, Hager? We've never had Why, Hager? Am I just now finding out? <laughs> well, I'll declare. That's a wonderful first prayer. He didn't always give us words. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Doris. See, Jesus, he told him to sing the one, go back now to the other song. And this is one he wrote while he was a sinner man. And it's entitled First Prayer. The first line says, all my life I've been a sinner. Oh, dear. Well, see, Jesus is real good to us. Amen. He's trying to help. And I was just listen. Just to what, you're saying it. Just well, I tell you, the power way. hit me. <laughs> just same as me, Doris. Just as I said that, the power of God hit me. And Raymond did a thing back there with his hand. <laughs> see, Jesus is helping us. I tell you, there's more power here than there was on Sunday. It was great. The Sabbath, the Holy Sabbath, the Christian Sabbath was great. Hey, get the but, power when Peter stand up. Oh, the Lord was a helping was us. I, it see, God's a teaching us. Oh, he's a teaching us. Well, Entitled First Prayer, and the first line is, All my life I've been a sinner. And so we'll see what God. Now, listen, we, we've got to get, <clears throat> if anybody's puzzled, if your theology's in trouble, we want you to get it all straightened out. <laughs> How in the world could God inspire a sinner man? He works in mysterious ways. He works in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. I'll tell you one thing. He said if he couldn't get the, if the children didn't holler that day, he'd have the rocks doing it. That's right. He once spoke to a donkey. Uh, yes, sir. He once spoke to it, Uncle. He he can do what he wants to, but now uh, he can also speak through an honest heart, and he did. That's called preventing grace, prevenient grace. He was reaching out into Bill before his commitment. This is great. Sometimes through a heart like this, you'll hear something you wouldn't have heard otherwise. There's a humility there. Sometimes it isn't to be had, but uh, we will listen to the song. Praise God. <laughs> First prayer. Amen. All my life I've been a sinner and no good they say. Just a heartless man in a heartless land. Please God, teach me how to pray. Like a baker by the roadside, like an infant in the crib. So humbly I plead, please God forgive me and teach a sinner to pray. They say you're never too busy. To hear a sinner's plea, oh Lord, won't you show mercy to, to a sinner, yes, a sinner like me. So Lord, while I'm kneeling by my bedside this day, Please, Lord, give me your guidance and teach a sinner to pray and teach a sinner to pray. Oh, 
doors. <laughs> oh, Hallelujah. <laughs> it's just Thank like you it, the right songs too. <laughs> God just helped you. How could he ever tell me at the beginning of the service, Hager, that y'all were supposed to sing? It is great. This is great tonight. Oh, we could see every one of us that know Bill. We're all stirred up and ready to everybody in this place does. And it, those that don't know him wish they did. And they will. I said, boy, I said, oh, Jesus, he's alive and well by God's grace. But here we heard a prayer and God witnessed through that, didn't he? He just witnessed through that. When he said he went tonight when I kneel, God witnessed right there. It touches my heart now. Well, he was, he, was, he was praying the prayer of his salvation before he ever made an open commitment. Bill was, Bill was humbling his heart and getting ready to go into the kingdom. Boy, you can tell it. Oh, that's great. That's great. That's great. Boy, I can see somebody who should be here tonight that appreciated that. Oh, praise God. There's something else was odd about this. Tonight, oh, it was about 6 o'clock. I had just taken my bath and got ready. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll call Hager, see if we could meet up to Martha's and go through a couple songs. <laughs> We've never done that. Hager, Hager, come back and do it again, would you? And we got up there. Yeah. And those are the only two songs we did. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> the only two. So could just do it one more time. We pray. Oh, oh dear Lord. He's so saying, how many how many years did he go on? How many how long has he we been gone to heaven? We lived in oh in heaven. Yeah. Four and a half years. Four and a half years. Mm -hmm. Now how long ago was the song written? Uh, this was written about fifty eight. this was written about fifty eight. Mm -hmm. About nineteen and fifty eight. In nineteen and fifty eight, my oh my, where was I? Twenty three years ago. Mother, where was I in 58? Was I in Arkansas A&M? Yeah. I was in Arkansas A&M College and just uh, in uh, Monticello, Arkansas is where I was. Oh, dear Lord. See, th that was an important year for this man to get down on his knees and write this song. He said, we've got to have a Christian song. Yeah. Well, don't you know he said, oh, God, help me? <laughs> yeah, he said, oh, God, help me. Did God hear his prayer? Boy, well, witnesses to it now. Oh, this is wonderful. And tonight you would obey the Lord and call Hager. She knew that was, she, she Hager knew that wasn't the regular thing. I really rushed her. Boy, Hager, that's so <laughs> great. I was surprised to I see her. Oh, well, that's good, I Martha. I was going to her house, but I was real nauseated all day today, so yeah. I didn't go to her house. But when she walked in, I was just leaving. This is great. <laughs> I'm thankful. I thought before we pray, it could be sung again. Praise okay. You. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Oh, my life, I've been a sinner and no good, they say. Just a heartless man in a heartless land. Please, God, teach me how to pray. Like a beggar by the roadside, like an infant in the crib. So humbly I plead, please God forgive me and teach a sinner to pray. They say you're never too busy. To hear a sinner's plea, oh Lord, won't you show mercy to, to a sinner, yes, a sinner like me. So Lord, while I'm kneeling by my bedside this day, Do you reckon, Pastor, that, was, that must have been Bill's prayer?
It was. It was. It was. It was. It was. Yeah, he started for the kingdom right there. Because someone, a man maybe of the world, said we've got to have a Christian song. He, he thought, oh my God. He decided, how am I going to sing a Christian song? How am I going to do it? He must wrote with his heart. He came right out of his heart because the Holy Spirit witnesses. He wrote one for a sinner. Yeah, he wrote one for a sinner. Had to be in that condition. I know the communion of saints, and I know that I can feel that cloud of witnesses at times, and I have special fellowship. But I said, Lord, somehow tell Bill we love him. God tell him. I said, Lord, I don't know where I'm supposed to tell him directly or where you can get the word to him. But somehow, see, we're all connected up through the Holy Spirit. Sort of and like I, the tape that Robin sent to uh, Jack. <laughs> well, they tell me that Robin wrote a letter every day and left them all with someone so Jack could get one every day. Because the mail's too disoriented between Brazil and there. Yeah, that's good, Doris. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Trio. Thank you for being on the battlefront tonight. It's very important. Yeah, said that 97% of us were not on the front line. That means yeah. got to me. You're on the front line. You women are on the front line tonight. May God give you strength to stay up there. <laughs> cool. That's great. One of you men come. Be sure they are assisted down. Thank you. Praise the Lord. To God. Let's stand for prayer. Take the microphone to Mary Jo, would you? Please let her pray a prayer for us to Jesus. Let's pray. Yes. Amen. Yes. We can't say enough. And Father, how thankful we are for this church and for our pastor and for all of our pastors. Every one of them are so precious, each unique in his own way. And for the people that are here that share from time to time. And Father, I don't know how to pray, yes, Jesus. but Father, I just pray that you would lay your hand on every soul that is here today, That's good. regardless of where they are, seated in the congregation, That's the good. choir, the ministers, we pray that you would just bless each one of yes. us and fill our hearts with the love and the joy of Jesus Christ, Amen. because Lord, we need it we in do. these days. We do, Jesus. And Lord, we pray for as not only as we are in this church, but in our community, in our homes, throughout the land, Amen. our missionaries. Amen. And for those that have gone, some we know personally, some that others here know personally, and they've gone out to to teach others about this Jesus and, and yes. his ways and how it is that when we come to... The, uh, denying ourself and picking up our cross and yes. following Thee. And Father, how that we need to know more about how to deny ourselves. We, okay. we need to know more how that we can carry the cross. Yes, yes. We need to know more about how that we should act and behave yes. in front of others. Because, yes. Lord, it's so important. Yes. It's so important. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, we pray that that you would continue thy blessing throughout Amen. the service. Oh, Jesus, thank you. And Father, we pray that that you would be with this nation yes. and the people that run this nation. Yes, Lord. And each, every 
person that's on the Congress and yes. the president and yes. all of them and the yes. governors and Man. mayors. We pray that, oh, God. Lord, that the people that go to church, yes. every person that goes, whether they're saved or not, Lord, that, that you would do something to cause them to feel the need of putting God first in their life Amen. so that that this nation could be once again yes. the nation uh, under you that yes. it was. And we pray for this. We yearn for this. Yes. We just pray that this nation would somehow, Lord, that God. we can see you, your work, sometimes in tragedy here yes. and sometimes in earthquakes there yes. and tragedy someplace else. Yes. But, Lord, we know it's your work Amen. because you're trying to wake America up oh, God. and how we need to be awakened. We yes. need to be awakened individually yes. because it's only the individual that makes each every individual that makes this nation what it is. Oh, and we need this lesson tonight. Oh, we need these things in the name of Jesus. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Mary Jo. You may be seated and the choir will sing. <laughs>
Yeah, we would. For months, I suppose. I have a book that is to be released Friday on my family. And my fifth great grandfather, Pierre Leger, never having known the man or anything, and when I found his will and had someone to translate it from the French for me, he began his will by thanking God for the blood of Jesus. Amen. Yes, sir. That had been freely given, that he might have eternal life, and that he thanked God for heaven, Amen. and that he expected to make it there. I had never read anything or heard anything like it in my life. You know, yes. people starting a will in that manner of praise, you might say a sacrifice of praise to yeah. God. True. And I, but that's the way it should be. It's true. And so many things that have been said tonight, go back to what you were talking about about a couple of weeks ago, that from the womb, Yes. We're ordained. Yes. And I think the same thing is with the man who wrote the song, The First Prayer. God knows way down through the years what will be and what influence that will have on generations upon generations of people who come along. Amen. I'm very anxious for you to meet this man beyond the eastern gate. I am more so now than before because uh, he, was a, he was a gift to us in days when we needed him so very much we would never have guessed that we could have given him up um, the people here have heard me say that his vision was clearer than most men I think he had about the clearest vision of any man of where values really were as he approached the eternal city than most anyone I've ever seen. I find that with all believers, their vision clears and they see very clearly and can confess things in terms of that which is right or that where God is really working. They recognize it quicker. But Bill had a gift that was so rare that I can't remember in all the services that he was with us. Once he set his heart determinedly to do God's will regardless of the cost. I can't ever remember him being slightly off. His, his heart was so clear. He had, a, he had to pray to stay in his seat. But when he would get up, God would help us so much. And oh, I treasured those moments and coveted them so that there's hardly words to tell it, but we've tried to tell it the best we could. Many of you here are agreeing because you know that this is true. But uh, here's a brother in the Lord that uh, thought of his, was it your father's will or grandfather's? Fifth grade. Fifth grade, long years back, testifying in his will, began of the blood of Christ, being thankful for the gift of God. This is so, but he saw the work of God from the first prayer on the future. Something about what the future holds and what all that's ahead. God knows that. He's talking clear back there for us. Talking clear back even as he was in his great, great, great grandfather's will. Oh, hallelujah. Who would have ever thought this service would be like this? What are you on the edge of your seat for, Anna? Yeah. Yes. You were so precious. You just, I tell you, I looked over, looked over, she's up on the edge of her seat. She's been with us a good while, her and her husband and family, but there she was on the edge of her seat, just about, dear husband, about as lovely as a person could be, but the, the hunger and the tenderness here, she was right up there, right up, just so close to Faye. Aren't you two friends? Yeah, yeah, you were. See, I was just sharing last night with Mary Ann 
over the phone about how I got down here. Yes. And, and I was sharing with her about Faye and how I got down here. And it's like, I can't thank Jesus enough, yeah. you know, for the hit that he brought me out of. That touches my heart. Yes. And I just, I, I'd like to move in down here. Did I hear you I'd say I'd like you... to bring Delbert and the kids and just move in. That's so good. <laughs> I well, that's so here. good. See, I, heard, I thought I heard her say she dreams about being down here all the time. You have a gift within you that most people don't have. There's, a, there's hardly anything between you and the kingdom. I mean, not much of a veil. By God's grace, it's very thin. There's very few people like that on earth. And that is so wonderful. Till I'm so amazed. See, I could tell that the way you were leaning on the seat. And that does my heart so much good. There's so much love in your heart. And there's so much hunger for Jesus. Now, you've been here long enough to get the burden to know that we're all human beings. And that we all have faults and weaknesses. But you're brighter than the day you landed in this place. I'm thankful. You're hungrier than the day you started. That's it just keeps getting better. I don't, you know, That's it's so like good, when we were in Israel, it's just like a, the, all the meals that they bring you, you the first one's good and it gets yes. better. And it's good. Yes. And that's the way it is here. And the devil tells you things. Yeah. But he tells yeah. you everything you need to know. Sure, sure he does. You just rebuke. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, I'm, I'm beginning to see just a little yeah, bit that's good. of how he, he'll tell you something. Yeah, right. And then you'll think, well, it's the opposite. Yeah. And you got to go by faith. Yeah, that's right. That that's the opposite exactly of what exactly right. He tells you. It's true. And and Jesus helps me to do that. Yes. Could, but, could would you be so kind to tell the tea bag story? <laughs> would you could you tell them? See, we're getting ready to go in Bill's first prayer. There was something, or was it? Is in the earlier song about the Holy Land, the love that was so different in the Holy Land of, through Jesus. Now, there's something happened at the, it was at the It was the mat? last day. At, in, the in last Lot. day, yeah, we were fixing to go home. Can okay. you, t uh, how many here have not heard the tea bag story? Not heard it. See, well, about half of us or more. So could you share what happened? Uh-huh. <laughs> Please. Okay, it was the last day, and we were in our room, and we were getting ready to go and take all of our bags downstairs. And... I had, well, I knew the last meal of the evening before we were to leave that I had this tea Damn. that was requested to, we, you know, everyone wanted us to bring something to drink because we didn't know what the prices would be. <laughs> so I knew, as I was thinking at the meal, uh, that I wasn't going to take that tea back with me. And so I got everything ready, and sure enough, there, my tea box of tea just would not fit with my luggage. <laughs> so I thought, well, I'll leave it on the desk. And it just didn't seem right. So I got everything together and went downstairs. Yes. And I looked up, and I saw a man at the desk, and he was hollering. He was going, keys, keys. And I looked up, and I had my keys and the, and the box of tea bags, and I just walked over to him, and I handed them to him. Handed them to the man calling and, for the keys. Yeah, and he, he looked at me, and he said, how did you know that this was my favorite kind of tea? And I said, well, I didn't, but I just felt like the Lord wanted me to do it. Yes. And he said, this is my favorite kind of tea. He said, I have waited three years for this kind of tea. I could not get it. And he said, I have drank it for 25 years. And uh, He's drank that tea for 25 years, but he waited for three years for that kind of tea, which was his favorite. She started to leave it, perhaps for the maid. She couldn't get it in her suitcase. Some of us have had to leave things on the table. and Thought maybe the maid might just go ahead and take it. But she felt that God said, no, don't do that. And so she went down. The man was calling for the keys. She puts the tea bags in his hand. He says, how'd you know? He's been looking for three years. Yeah. Jesus knew that. And wanted that Israeli person to be blessed with those tea bags that he had longed for for three years. And he I, was excited. And well, I, sure I was. left him. And then we got ready to get on the bus. 
And I went back over to him and I shook his hand. Well, I just, I just stood there and I said, I just want you to know that I'm, I'm just so thrilled to be here. Yes. And he took my hand with both of his. Yes. And he, he just looked almost in tears. And he said, I just want you to know, he said, that I will never forget this. Well, he can't forget that. And I wanted to go back on, you know, this last trip, I wanted to go back so bad and take him some more tea. <laughs> if I'd have thought of it, I would have gotten his name and address oh, and so sent wonderful. him some. Yeah, we, but you didn't but think I didn't think. It. So I thought, well, you know, I just have to rebuke the devil and say, well, Jesus, if, if I'm to get him some more tea, I'll... We're, we're staying in that hotel. We're staying in that one oh, this time. Oh, that's wonderful. Told me. So that's one <laughs> maybe somebody could take some for me. Oh, <laughs> maybe we'll get them and say, oh, God, talk to anybody up there, try to find out who it is. That's so great, Anna. See, I had forgotten the details myself. I had forgotten that he had been looking for those. I just love, just, when Jesus does stuff like that, What? Anna? and when you preach on loving people, yeah. and when you review, yes. I, I really get fed. That's so good. I, I really do. That's so wonderful. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I have something for you, if I can give it to you. Why, oh, yes. yes. You do. And I wanted to give it to you. Oh, I'm so thankful it, that. Jesus helped me find it. Oh, it's so good. Praise the Lord. Wow. Here I called on your name now. You had a card for me. I know. I'm excited. <laughs> Jesus. That's about like a tea bags. That's almost like the tea bags. That's so great. That's so great. She had a card for me. I'm here, this precious man that I fellowship with, sermon after sermon after sermon, respond to one who's gone on before that God gave him a, a song while he was a, printer, a, a sinner. And I'm, I catch out of my left eye this precious woman. Oh, we've, it's been so great. And it just flies out of me. What are you so excited about? Of course, I knew she was. Tell by her position of her body. And the light of God on her face. And here she tells, and I feel led to have her tell this tea bag story. She's waiting to give me a card. What is our Jesus like? I can't wait to get to heaven to find out more. <laughs> she said she couldn't wait to get to heaven and find out more. I mean, you find out more here. But that's you right. Know. That's good because all secrets will be told there. I used to sing a song that. Um, We'll talk it over in the by and by. We'll talk it over, my Lord and I. I'll ask the question, he'll tell me why. And we'll talk it over in the by and by. That's what she's talking about. You'll ask the question, he'll give you the answer up there. Oh, Anna, that is so Praise good. This love is so good. It is so great. Praise the Lord. I've never seen a dim, I've never seen a dimness in her eyes whatsoever. It'll take I'm Jesus. a lot of answers right oh, now. Oh, it's cool. It's, she said, I'm getting a lot of answers right now. <laughs> Glory to God. Isn't this wonderful? Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is so gracious and so precious. Now, I will tell you a little secret for all these people and my precious wife. I love you just like you love me. Oh. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> what? What? Savannah. She wants me to open this card. <laughs> well, is you doing all right back there? <laughs> Pastor Kathy? Well, I've never seen a card like that in my life. Now, here's a, come on. <laughs> Dear Pastor Oak, Jesus really helped me find this card. I like it so well. I'm sending one to Reverend Him, too. Your sermon this past Sunday morning was so good. I could have sat there all day and listened. I'm thankful that my hope came almost three years ago in September. I just want you to know how much I appreciate you and your life. Your sermons feed my soul. I can remember so well when I was very young that I would have this thirst within me. The only thing I knew was that no drink or food could satisfy it. I had no idea 
It was my soul thirsting for God. It was lonely. When I came to Scott Depot, I made the connection of what this thirst meant. Your preaching quenches my thirst. Amen. Praise the Lord. I love you, Anna Brandon. And this, this is something. There is <laughs> there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight pencils. But all these pencils are turned in a certain direction. But one pencil, colored pencils, turned in the other direction and takes you into the card. And it says, thanks for being different. <laughs> so it's written, thanks for being different. It's so good. Oh, it's so wonderful. See, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell each of you about the love that's in my heart. And, and I don't love you as a mass. I don't even care for the word. I've always been conservative, and we've and the conservative in my history has never cared for the term masses or collectivism. We don't care for that stuff because it usually is an equalizer that mashes all people down to nothingness. Paul Harvey said, what we're trying to do is cut off the legs of the tall people and make everybody the same size. I've never gone for that. And yet... And yet, I believe in a collective love of God in a commune of the church. And there's where the real unity is on the earth for it to come. And so, it's hard. I look at everybody and say, I love you. But, but when I say that, I see every person as special. And you're special and you know something. Uh, how can you say it? Uh, Bill was a person who was so singularly different, so markedly different than the average man of the earth. But it was because of Christ Jesus and the hunger in his heart out of which we see the, this first prayer many years ago. Now, you see, she's telling me that. She told me right there. She said that she was like this when she was young. She had this thirst. So when we found her, I found, I found such love, such longing, and I've watched her now, and I've never seen it dim or never seen it change. And to look out here tonight and see her on the edge of her seat, which is fine. I don't want you to be conscious of it, but you can see Jesus brought my eyes to you. To, you've probably done this before, but I saw it tonight. I've always seen the hunger in your face. And I thought it was so wonderful what you said about Peter's face. You know, Peter out there is dipping his toes in the water and he, he doesn't know whether to get in or get out. The Lord said, now I want to wash your feet. Peter said, no, you're not going to, you may, no, you're not going to do that to me. He thought he was being humble. Then Jesus said, well now Peter, if I don't wash your feet, I'm not going to have any part with you. Well, he said, well, all right. With still this terrible dread in his being, he said, well, just I'll take a whole bath because he wanted to be a part of Jesus. But you can tell he's in a perplexed situation there, the way he's dipping his feet. And then our precious artist friend, now our friend, has captured that so wonderfully. She said, you know, that's the way I feel when I'm around you. Well, I, by God's grace, I read that right. Not so much yeah. in perplexity, but in awareness of my calling, in awareness of love until it, that I will never be common to her. There's no way. Jesus helping, it will never leave her. Now she told me by that that I will never be common. No more than Lauren M is common to me. Some one boy, somebody said to me one day, he said, well, just call him Lauren. I said, I can't do it. Somebody said, well, just call her Florence. I said, I can't do it. Now, now some people can if she wants you to. I can't make it. I have to say, Brother Ham. I've, I've, all, I've been able to say Sister Florence, but I can't get the sister out of there. See, Methodists aren't raised with, the, the modern Methodist is not raised with the sister and brother much. And they don't know what to do with it. And she's never acclimated to that. She was from a school, a family that didn't say that. She accepts it, but she thinks that we're closer to her if we don't say sister and brother. I can't make it. Now, the reason I can't make it is because I'm like Peter out there. I don't know whether to get in or get out. You know how but I know how you feel. I know this. I feel this way around 
anybody who really has a special calling of God on their life. Now, what it does for them, when you have this awareness, any person who's really called of God knows they're called of God. See, after they respond to that call, they know. But the devil is so terrible that what helps? Now, if you, you that know psychology know this is true. Our value, that is, and this is not overvaluing yourself, but to know what we even know is true, that we have worth and that we have a calling, that value is sustained and reinforced through reflection. That's why mothers and daddies love their children. Say, oh, honey, I love you. Honey, you're beautiful. You're just, it's not to build them up in the flesh. No, no. It's to reflect their true worth. That's why sweethearts look at each other and say, I love you. You're wonderful. You do that after five years. You do it after 10. You do it after 15. You do it after 20. You, and you, you, you reflect their value. If it doesn't, the devil's so terrible and the world's so non-caring, it takes you clear under. And it takes... Most people aren't normally healthy. They've got something. They've been hurt somewhere. Even a person that's normally healthy is only is healthy in part through the reflection of others. Their value of him. This is not a false value, but a correct value. And so this, this, reflect, this, re, this value is reflected. And so God's telling you through a brother and sister, yes, I've called you. Yes, you're valuable, yes. You're worth something, and you're special to that person. And if it's, if it's not true, of course, you can tell it after a while. But it's, if it's true, time will serve to reinforce it and cause you to feel more and more at home. And yet, if you have a gift like you have and a heart like you have, the joy and that excitement only increases. Brother Helm calls me now on the phone I'm very aware of his calling. Sometimes I'm, I shake a little. I'm concerned about my words. I have a certain, you know what I mean? And I'm, excuse me, I just cry out for God to help me. Some have braggingly said, well, I don't feel that way. I feel, uh, well, I say, that's all right. But that's the way I feel. And I know, I know enough to know that if I'm feeling right, that's the way I should feel. So this is a wonderful relationship. My closeness to you is extra, extra close by God's grace because of this gift in you. Because I can tell what's going on in the kingdom and tell about where I am by your response. It, Stephen, are you, is this correct? This is correct by God's grace. Because Stephen has been like that with me almost from the time he landed. When he, when he finally hung on to God enough to break through and rest came to him, yet he never... By God's grace, he's never lost his reverence. He's never lost his tenderness. And he's as aware today of my calling in God as I am his. I've never lost it. Jesus help me. It, Terry, isn't this wonderful? So I'm sharing a little about why she feels as Peter. Not so much in perplexity as it is the stirring of the kingdom. The joy and what happens to a human body when we have this gift and we feel. Now that would, if we would all keep our eyes upon Jesus, that would eventually come to us all. But if we look more at earthly things than in heavenly things, then we get common with each other. I am always aware by God's grace that every person has a special gift from God and is a special gift from God. And therefore, when I look and talk to them, I'm thinking about heavenly values and of their being created eternally. And I'm also thinking about how not to grieve the Holy Spirit in my relation. When we get too common, Common is an old shoe. We're too common. But see, in Christ, that doesn't, that doesn't work that way. Tim and Jeannie and I are closer than we were the day we met and more enthralled with each other than the day we met. That's Christ Jesus. See, isn't this wonderful? Does that touch your heart? See, it's Christ Jesus. The fact that we're closer today is because of Christ Jesus. I know them better. I know more about I know more about their victories. I know more about their battles. I know more about their talents. I know more about that. But I'm more acutely aware of their uniqueness, their being different in Christ than I've ever been. See, and when I lose that or someone loses that with me, you can't hardly work with them anymore. It's about gone. Unless that tenderness is there, to some degree you can hardly work with people. Isn't this correct? I told somebody in the old church house, I said, you know, I said, uh, I told one day what Jesus said. 
And about six or eight people made no response. And I told them what the Holy Spirit said. And they should have known me well enough to know by then I wasn't lying. I told them what God said. God Almighty in heaven. So when the church vote came, eight of them voted the opposite of what God said. Well, I was so puzzled by it because it wasn't really that controversial of a matter. I was so puzzled by it. The next Sunday, I made this statement. I said, well, folks, I cannot do anything for anybody that won't believe God. My abilities are over. Well, it stirred that person up so much they were in my study. Correct? They came after me. What did you mean by that? Well, I said, I mean exactly what I said. That I, How's that? That's when we first started thinking about the tape ministry and about getting what you said or what you say on yes, the tape. Yes, sir. Right. Because we had a tape. What happened? And we went back yeah. and played the tape. Yeah, to hear what I said. To hear what you said. Because it wasn't quite said like I said right. it. That's right. But I said, you know, what I said was that God, if we don't believe God, I can't help anybody that doesn't believe God. They never could get what I was saying. But you believe God, and that means as long as God's helping me and leading me as I look to Him, we'll be friends forever. It's great, isn't it? To think that you had... Are we a little bit amazed? Yes. To think that I'd have her tell the tea story she would have in her hand a little card of a pencil that's turned around the other day, other way, is colored, different from all the rest. It says on the inside, thanks for being different. And I've been hungry like this since I've been a child. Oh, this is great. And you're just like Anna. Just like her. And Sandy is just like the dream you, what God's done for her since he reached down from heaven all on his own and did it for Sandy and she knows it. She's just like you other two. She just, that's why tonight she just, her face is just like yours. But now I knew all along she was like that. Even when the devil had her uh, strapped or whatever he was trying to do, which was so terrible. To, to, he's a terrible, the devil's terrible. And only God can break through all that. No human being can break through and get the love of God to us. But boy, when he does it, hang on to it forever. Because that's what spared my mother in time of great need. Is when Jesus reached down and said all on his own, I love you. You're my child. Boy, when God did that, she had, she had enough to go on then. And that's why, isn't this great? This is so great. This is so great. Praise the Lord. I just wanted to review she had this in her hand. I tell her, tell the tea story, and she's holding in her hand a card for a pastor. This is Wednesday night, and God's wonderful, right? <laughs> said, Jesus, how you, how you going to lift us out? How are you going to help us, Jesus? How are you going to give us the fire? Boy, he's worked in such a special way until there's no way to tell it. Praise the Lord. Well, I tell you, uh, my wife can come and put her arms around you because this is what I would like to do. So that's it. I love you. Yeah, I love you. I love you like, like a man should. I love you with a pure heart. I mean, I wouldn't want to hurt you for anything in the world. I, I'm so happy that you've got a wonderful husband and, and children. I'm so thrilled. He's a, he is yeah. a Zebedee. Yeah, that's what and you I told me. I, I got a note from her, and she said, you're like Zebedee. Praise the Lord. That's great. That's great. Isn't that wonderful? So, honey, I thought you could love her for me. Yes. Can you bring me a mint, please? Thank you. I believe I'm supposed to praise the Lord. Oh, uh, amen. The devil has been telling me that this oh, isn't important, you, but the way that Anna got here, yes. uh, we put Kenny in Cross Lane's kindergarten, Christian, Cross Lane's Christian kindergarten. Yes. And I just did that because I believed I was to have my children in Christian school. And... Uh, one Sunday, not too long after I had been here, you preached and you were sharing. I don't know if it was in a sermon or you were just sharing with us, but you told us if everyone there would reproduce themselves one time, that we would not be able to hold the people. Oh. Well, the Lord just helped me to take that by faith for my whole family. Yes. That the Lord would help me some way to bring in one for Why, each one of you my are family. Telling me a story. 
I I've never you're... told anyone this that no, I can but recall. I can, we can all about see where you're going. And uh, the Lord has done that and more because she... of, of that. I just took it by faith that the Lord would help me to do it. And it wasn't any effort type of thing. I didn't work at going and getting somebody here. No. I just believed God. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you That's how right. it was that, that day. It just happened in my seat that I said, all right, Lord, yes. I'll do that. And you reproduced yourself is what you did. And uh, the way that, that God brought in in it's wonderful and she yes. is a wonderful person oh, i know it I, it I knew that the first time i ever heard a sound from her voice but see i got something to tell folks now this this is getting better yes. you see this card you see this card in my left hand i'm going to reach in my coat pocket i'm going to pull out this card and i'm going to open it up this was on my desk before i started out i'm going to open it up i'm going to look on the Last page. Thank you for being my friend, Faye. <laughs> Two cards tonight. See, one's a little, one's a note, one's a card. She said she's going to reproduce herself. <laughs> oh, Terry, she's getting better. And there's something else that I believe I'm supposed to share. Oh, certainly. Today, when I was praying, when Anna said about it was like a, about being here, it was like a lover. I, when I was praying, I was thinking about the Holy Spirit, and I was thanking the Lord for giving him to us. And um, when Jesus went away, he left us his bride here, and he had to go away. But he told us that he would send us a comforter. He would send us someone yes. to be with us and yes. someone to guide us yes. and help us. Yes. And that one that he sent would bring us messages from the bridegroom. Yes. And I thought, how many times that Jesus has sent a message through the Holy Spirit to his bride. Yes. And he's had to go back and say, she wouldn't listen to me. She didn't hear what no, you said. He's had to go back and say that. He, she won't listen. And if everyone... Now, this doesn't make me anything. I, I, but if everyone had heard the message of the bridegroom the day you said, if everyone here would reproduce themselves. See, you didn't just say that. No, I didn't say that. I didn't just say that. And it's through you the service of God that we hear... From the bridegroom, that's just my time. heart, and I pre and I said that in a sermon on the bridegroom. No, that came just from my thoughts this afternoon in prayer, but it all tied together sitting here. Oh, I see. And her sharing was that had everyone heard that was a message from the bridegroom yes, when you said right. that. That's right. And had had yes. all of the bride heard that, there would be many more here. Faye, you're so correct. So the Lord just said some years ago that there was something like 10,000 who would have hearts to hear like her if we would obey between Charleston and Huntington. I don't know how in the world we'd ever take care of 10,000. We really can't take care of over about 500. But I suppose as God would bring in the 500, then we could, we could duplicate ourselves as fellowships and somehow through the Holy Spirit learn how to tie it all together by God's grace. Praise the Lord. Yes, Anne. Anna brought me faithfulness. Anna brought That's you? That's why I'm here today. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm here. Glory. I, it's just because of her being so faithful. Well, you See, when I first yeah. came here, yeah. I didn't know, but some of the times I didn't know what in the world you were talking about. Sure. But I never had Jesus in my heart before, and what? I knew that was a good thing to have. Amen. So I stayed right there with it. Yes. By His grace. And Glory mercy. to God. See, I didn't so know that. Oh, That's helping me. See, I just put, looked back and spoke to her. I saw light on her face, light on Sandy's face. So I tried to tell them they were sisters in the spirit, but I didn't know that these two were connected that way. I really didn't know the specifics on that. This has come out of the teabag story and of me seeing out of the corner of my eye. Well, so much. By the way, I need to be reminded of your name so that we all may know you better. My, I'm Robert Croft from Georgia. 
Robert Croft from Georgia. Friend of Gary. A friend of Gary Chester. Oh, Gary. Praise the Lord. Uh, last September, I went to a school for carbide yes, sir. in uh, New Jersey. And one night I was going down to eat dinner, and he asked me to come over and eat at his table. So I did, and you just preached on we need to pray a half hour every day. Yes, sir. And, and we also we talked about do we need to keep the essentials. So I thought, well, Lord, this would be a good time for me to, to witness to this fellow. So I sat down, and I always say grace before, before meals or before, you know, I do just about anything. I always, especially before meals, I always say grace. Yes, sir. So I asked him if I could, I was going, I said, sir, I'm going to pray. So he said, go ahead, and I prayed. Uh, and ere long, we got to talking a little bit, and I found out, and I looked at him, and I said, uh, Robert, and I said, do you know Jesus? I never said it just like, you know, just point blank, so to speak. And, <laughs> and he said, I sure do. Oh, and we started fellowship. Oh, yes, sir. And he's here on an eight to ten week assignment with oh. Carbide. And uh, oh. I told him, of course, all about the church, about oh, everybody yeah. here. And he's been very thrilled with the, with the whole the whole congregation. I've had such fellowship. So such grace. See, I know him in the spirit. Knew him the first time I ever saw him. Tonight he obeys God. So we have a chance to become better acquainted. And all of this has come to pass for our encouragement, for our help. Isn't this wonderful? Boy, you can land anywhere in the world where God's working, and this is the way you feel. Anywhere in the world where Jesus is in control, and you'll find a brother You'll find a sister. You'll say, well, hallelujah. This is of God. Because my spirit bears witness with his spirit that we're brothers in Christ. We are children of God. The Abba of the Father is within. This is wonderful, isn't it? Well, I couldn't have planned this. If you knew, if you knew how carefully I've walked in this journey and how much I've trembled. Because I had to hear God telling me this. I could see which way we're going. But when it gets to working like this, it jumps clear out of my you see, it jumps ahead of me so far till I tremble to say, Jesus, what will it a while ago when I didn't know what to do? I knew he'd spoken to me about the trio, but I wasn't quite sure what to do. What to do. I very seldom ever say that. What to do there? Well, I didn't know what to do. But the Holy Spirit helped us so the trio would sing. And out of first prayer, Robert obeys. Out of that leading, that, I see sister out of my eyes. I see her over here. And you see all of this beautiful fellowship is coming out of that. And I could do something that only God could arrange. Pull two notes have been given to me tonight by one sister who had reproduced herself. And here we were. And I got them right here. Yes. Amen. And I could tell everybody how much I love her and her and her and her how much I love them in front of my wife, in front of my people, by God's grace, so that they'll all know that that's pure and they'll all know that that's exactly the way it's supposed to be and that I care enough for them to die for them. And I know what I've just said. So that we would be encouraged and strengthened in the Lord in these days because the kingdom cannot be shaken, but everything else is about to be shaken real good. And I don't know when he'll shake the heavens too, but that's ahead of us also. He said it would be. He said the only thing that's going to remain is the kingdom. It's all that can't be shaken. It's just the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. You sit up here like everybody out in the seat. Right on the edge. Glory to God. Jesus has sure been wonderful. Praise the Lord. Well, Sandy, we'll wait to take the offering last and the announcements. Thank you. I want to say, that have I said this for Keith Lewis? Where are you? Keith? Kelly? Right? Freeman? They're supposed to be married. They were going to get married in October. But they spoke to me about him going to the Holy Land. I said, well, his mother called in and said, thought they might could raise a few hundred, but not 2,000, but a few hundred. We think maybe Keith ought to go. So they spoke to me about it. I said, well, we might get together five or six hundred, but you'd have to borrow the rest. But I said, isn't he and Kelly going to get married? Yes. Well, I said, I, I'd like to say okay, but I don't want him to get married with debt. Stephen told Kelly. Kelly said, we'll be glad to wait. 
So she said, we'll be right like that. He said she spoke instantly. She responded like that. She said, we'll be glad to wait. Because I didn't want them to marry with debt. Uh, the times and all and various things. I just didn't want them to have debt. I just spoke my wishes. I didn't say they had to do that or not. I just, she said, we'll wait. So he's going to get the extra money, pay it off before they get married. They've delayed their wedding date so that he can be free of debt. Folks, what do you think? <laughs> See, I thought of that when Mother started coming across there. See, he has one of the, one of the most wonderful callings of the church that any man could have on the face of the earth. Now, he, he, he's with me just like she is. He's just like Anna. Am I right? Well, oh, you never know when he's going to get up. I tell you, on a bus one day, he spoke up, and everybody went into the diamond factory but us, and we had the most precious stones on the bus. Oh, the diamond factory was, didn't have any luster at all compared to what was happening on the bus. Glendale? Were you on that bus? Was Richard and you on that bus? Were we on that bus? You was on the bus. Yes. You remember that? The glory was on the bus. He was responding over me. Yep, Jim, glory, hallelujah. Jim stayed right with us. Bless God. We had a camp meeting on the bus. Woo! <laughs> I, tried, I tried to call the saints back. They didn't hear me. Boy, the, the luster of the diamonds. I wasn't aggravated. I, I just didn't want them to miss it in case they could hear the call in my voice. Right. And they went on off. Boy, we stayed. I'll tell you, Keith began to talk back there, and the glory flew. And I, he, what Keith probably didn't know was, Keith, probably what you didn't know was I've been trying to obey God. Steve, I don't know if you was on the bus that day, but I was trying to obey God. I was trying to be faithful, and he caught it. He caught the glory of God and see nearly all my bus had missed it. All my people had nearly missed it and gone off, but he knew it. And brother, they all flew off there, but he stayed on with a little group and then he let it, then he let me know about it. Dad, you were on it. Daryl, you were right there. <laughs> oh, Glendale, it was great. Then we had our meeting right there. Then we had our meeting. See, and what happened to me, I was healed. Because I had stepped out a little to obey God some way or another. See, I can't remember the details. I just remember the great aloneness of my soul. Boy, Keith was watching me from back there. He didn't get off. He had something to say. He stayed right with me. Listen, if this man was going to be in need, he wasn't going anywhere. He's going to stay right on the bus. Jim stayed on that bus. His mama stayed on that bus. Daryl stayed on that bus. Was you on that? <laughs> Glory! <laughs> Y'all remember now? Boy, I had to help. Anna, was you? Boy, I had help on. See, they stayed to help me because I tried to obey God some way and I was in a lonely place. He caught it. He caught it. I'm telling you. Huh? He caught it. He caught it. He said, oh, I'm going to stay with him. I'm going to tell him what's happening in my heart. Brother, he put the reflection black. He, knew, he could tell me that I was obeying God. He could tell me that the kingdom of God was in operation. He could tell me without leaving me alone out there like Elijah because I just like to run off under a juniper tree. You know, I'm not, I'm, less, I'm not as strong as Elijah. But see, God's servant was back there to help me. And grandmother, you remember it. Right. Amen. Glory. No, the thought came to me that all the money that I've ever given to the kingdom, that one, he couldn't have bought that one moment, Pastor. You see, we don't realize that all the money in the world is not worth one minute when we're in God's will. You, and I wanted to tell Kelly that I love her so much. Oh. Since I heard how she responded, I thank God wow. because I've been on my knees many nights. I've laid on my bed and prayed for all these young boys to have the right wife and the girls to have the right Right. Oh, God's it's working it the out only that thing way. That's the working that way. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Her mother and daddy's just like that. Her mother and daddy's always been like that. Right. Boy, I'm telling you, if, it, if I hadn't, a, I don't know what, they was ready to throw everything, they was ready to sell everything when I came. I, had, I just had to say, Bob, let's just wait and trust, because he was so, why, he was so great. Well, their daughter's like that. See, this is great. <laughs> Praise this the is Lord. great. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you, grandmother, for that. Now, when mother started to cross there, I remembered this. Now, here's a young bride right here that's going up to love her that has a beautiful baby. And she loves her husband. They love their baby. So she knows something about that sacrifice, Rob. She can tell a little bit how that'd be if she had to wait any longer for you. 
Glory to God. <laughs> Boy, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be far greater than they ever thought. Yes. That mom came back for the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy couldn't buy one anyway. He came out and bought the pearl at great price. Now I don't want anybody to feel bad. That wasn't my purpose in sharing that. Because God left the saints with me so that I could get help. And other saints went in, but see, I needed help. I was, it's many times like this on a Holy Land trip. The loneliness is so great, there's no way to tell you, except you yourself have been in lonely places, desperate and alone, and you needed someone to break through that, someone to know without you pleading. Did anybody hear me? Does anybody know my need? Boy, when he spoke up, he had the word back there, and there were enough with me until I got refreshed. Then I was ready for the rest of you. I was ready then to go on and encourage. I needed help. What year was that, uh, Glendale? Uh, dear ones, what year was that? Do you remember? Does anybody else know what year that was? What trip? Was it really? You remembered. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Ces was it close to Caesarea by the sea or down in that area? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, glory. I don't mind. I've been so many trips, 17 of them, starting with 18. It's hard for me to remember. But oh, that was wonderful. Praise God. Praise God. I'll tell you what. Sandy's going to sing, but I'm not sure I'm going to preach. I think maybe if the Lord will let us, we'll wait till next Wednesday night. If He'll let us. You don't get any prayer operation. If He'll let us do it. I, I'm developing something I'd like longer on anyway to give you the context of the Hebrews. See, and then I'll go ahead, Jesus help and preach on the faith of Noah. Oh, I'm excited. I'm, see, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm, I'm looking for something that you've not heard before, not just for its uniqueness sake, but I'm looking for the fire that will alert your attention. And I've already found something. I found, I found two points that's got me thrilled. See, and I'm just reading, reading, reading. I, see, you don't know it sometimes, but because of your love for me and generosity and the book account, when I get on a sermon like this, I may go out and buy $20 to $100 worth of books. Now, not, not because books have so much in it, but if I run through there, I may find a man that's weighed on God. I keep reading, and I see, I see something right there. See, I've never seen that before. Bob, Bob will stand with me, and our brother Robert will stand with me, too. See, I may have started doing an awful lot. I went out and bought Pink's book, finally, on Hebrews. Man, is it a giant. Oh, and I found, I found, I think, the first two points in Pink alone. But see, I've been reading. I bought an old book by Plummer, one of the great. It may have been out of your store. I'm not sure. But I bought a book by Plummer that's written two or three hundred years ago, and they've just reprinted it. Like uh, some of the old preachers. Uh, who's the old in Philippians? I got in your place one day. Anyway, reprints by Erdman's. Anyway, Plummer wrote, William Plummer, years ago. I got that old volume. He's an old man of God, see. No telling what I might be able to fathom out of that. But because you allowed me to have the tools, uh, and then sometimes it is, I'm just reading along. Jesus says something right there. He says, here, let me let you see that. On the faith of Abel, most of all of that came out of my own waiting before God rather than any materials I had. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. Glory be to God. You know, today in the prayer, while we were praying, David said, Lord, uh, help the people have victory tonight. And... Um, I felt like the Lord had spoken to me, and I told you on the phone, I said, now, Pastor, yeah, he said, he, they either have got it yeah, real good, or yeah. they don't have it very well. Yeah. He said, That's, see, God told him, God said, pray. Yeah. Well, he said, Albert, they're either not going to have it, or they're going to have it awful good, one or yeah. the other. <laughs> well, I said, we'll find out when we get there. Jesus helping, it's on the positive yeah. side. Yes. We, it's said, on the we positive ask the Lord side. to break down the barrier. Yeah, I said, God, break down break the barrier. Break it down, Jesus. Sometimes he'll tell us, pray, you're going to run into a wall. Yeah. I want you to know about it. Don't be shocked. Yes. That's what he's saying. But he, it was the other way. It was going to be Because, good. see, the, the joy of your obedience. So, Peter, you had a great hand in that. Peter started. You had a great hand. Boy, these, the fellows prayed and found staying on the promises. Boy, when you went up, 
man, the power started operating. You know, Brother Ham said there's a wall three feet yeah. thick yeah. that uh, keeps us from what said, we need. Jesus said that wall is three foot thick. Whatever that means, that's symbol. But that means God says she symbolized it, but tells them that falls three foot thick. Uh, and that's hard to get through that. But you went right over it. We went right through it, under it, over it, around it. Some way you got right over it. And that broke open the service for us. Now, people in the flesh try to work this up by shouting and rolling sometime in the floor. There have been holy rollers. I, I don't know how holy they were, and some of them were. They meant well. But it's not a work up in the flesh. It's an obedience to the Spirit. It may mean a testimony or a card or a song or a prayer, but just a simple obedience or a little word spoken in appreciation. But that may strike, that will be the word where the fire comes from. See, tonight it was your obedience, Peter, the key to the service. Because God was helping. I could see, I could, ooh, I could hear it. And my brother jumped up with a fire. See, oh, when you sing standing on the promises, why, you got up and stood on them in symbol. You, you demonstrated with your body what you were doing in faith. And then I knew that God was speaking to the other saints. I saw about everybody, but brother, kid. And they started, when they did, the power got stronger. God gave us a little lesson right there. And it's just, see, in this service, that, there's no end to it. We'll just, after Sandy's song, we'll just trust and be real careful. Try not to give the spirit because when God works like this, there's no end to it. The kingdom of God never quits. Praise his holy name. Amen. Leading you, Amen. Helping you. Ooh. Because what now if there's any doubting Thomas's, it's time to get right right now. Amen. Because this whole thing has been put together so wonderfully. <laughs> and I want to praise the Lord and thank him for it. It was on my heart to do it when you looked at me, I just sort of popped oh, up. Yes, and did sir. It. I'm it's to, yes, sir. Uh, Jesus is in control. Jesus it's a marvelous thing. thing. Yes, because I have been if you knew how I had been trembling for almost all this service, because Jesus is just ahead of me and I'm trying to follow him. See, I could tell that almost from the start. When Peter started that, then I began to say, now, Jesus, how do I respond? Do I join him? For He said, no, I'm speaking to others. You let them get up. I want them to get up themselves. Boy, they did. I mean, we had a pretty good show of saints there. So then what I began to do was try to keep up with him. Because, see, I haven't had to work up. I haven't had to worry about it. All I tried to do is keep up with Jesus. That's all you're trying to do. He's great, isn't he? Boy, when he's leading, he's great. Well, it's great, David. You're so right by God's sweet, wonderful grace. David, it's, it's just like it, it, being a boy in the kingdom forever. It's a great thing. Great privilege. When I met him on the road to Bethlehem, what Jeannie was singing, uh, were you here that service? She was singing... Uh, I walked a day where Jesus walked, and I was trying. I was going through the different places, and I, when I got to the road to Bethlehem, I stopped, and I saw the dusty roads, and I saw the the, the lizards, and I saw the things that H. V. Morton writes about. You know, it's, it's such a beautiful passage. And when I started up that road, then I saw him coming toward me. You know, it surprised me. But as he got closer, I found myself looking up like I do to you. You know, because I looked up. <laughs> God know it. I said, yeah, it's true, yes, sir. Well, David, as he came right up to me, I found I had to even reach up. Now that's tall. So I was I was so little. I was such a little boy. I had to reach up. And then he turned and took this hand like this and we started toward Bethlehem together. But I was still reaching up. There he was. Isn't that great? Great. See, I didn't expect that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I do. Yes, sir. You know, I've made no judgment on whether Earl Roberts saw Jesus 200 foot tall or 100 foot tall. I'm so disturbed because of the skeptics and the awful minds that have written against him. That's not my right to judge that. He said he did. I don't know whether he did or he didn't, but they're very disturbed at him over it over the city of faith that he's building out there? I don't know. But let me tell you something. If Jesus, wanna, if Jesus wants to appear 200 foot tall, he can do it. Some person in our papers up here that fights God teeth and toenail wrote an awful article about that. 
and said, well, they, they, he wasn't that tall. Years ago, they told us how tall he was. Well, I'm telling you, folks, they tell you they don't know anything about the Spirit. Mother Barr saw him standing on the ocean, ocean like that with his hands under the airplane. She saw him in vision. Folks, you know how many miles high that is? <laughs> don't tell that person on the Gazette. They ain't going to believe it. So they'll write awful things. But she saw him, Chase. She saw him, Mama Bar saw him. Boy, I'm telling you, he had his feet on the sea and his hands were holding the plane up like that. that she saw the vision that we were undergirded by the mighty power of God and Jesus was standing like that. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, sir. How big do you think he appeared to Moses from Moses on the sea of glory? Man alive, I don't know. I never thought about it. But he hid Moses with his hand. That's good. Boy, I wish I'd have had you to write, get after that fellow on the paper in a nice way. He, he hid Moses with his hand. Because the glory was too great. No, Moses just saw the backside of him. And see, he hid Moses with his hand. When he came down, the people couldn't even look at Moses. The glory was so bright. Glory to God. That's good. Boy, Chase, I pray you resist every devil in the, on the earth and keep on walking with God because a man that thinks like that thinks like a Christian man. A man that thinks like that thinks like angels. Boy, you think like the kingdom. God talks to you like that. That's great. Hallelujah. I saw a hand back here somewhere. Yeah. Mary Jo. Thank you, Mary Jo. <laughs> yes, ma'am? You are wonderful. How big is God? Big enough to fill the universe and to live in my heart. I was thinking, oh, I'm getting preached to. And I like it. I love it. That's what would thrill me when I was a boy. I'll tell you what I like to see. I like to see the saints defeat the intellectuals of this world. Boy, I like spiritual wisdom. Oh, they run out, oh, they run off their mouths and they're half cocked and they show how little bitty they are. They defy the living God and a, a little childlike heart knows more than they know. Brother, it's amazing to me. Glory to God. Got more wisdom in their little toes than the, than the great writers of this life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That helps me. <laughs> Charles, glory. Certainly you may. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Mary Jo, out of 47 years. Out of all 47 years of my life, I've heard an awful lot of pastors and preachers, men and women too. The two greatest sermons I've ever heard in my life was preached right here by you. Oh, I, well, I want to thank the God. The first sermon was the Jewish prayer that you preached a few months ago, and then the symbols that we show our children. That was fabulous. And I want to praise the Lord for praise it. Praise the Lord. I want to Pastor, thank it was you. a blessing to me. I want to thank you. And I just praise the Lord, and I hope that everybody here that night got as much out of it as I did. Jesus, I thank thee. Lord, accept our thanksgiving praise of Jesus for this. Don Warner told my father, now I want to show you how God's speaking to our people. And certain, in a certain way now, God got a hold of Mary Jo. 47 years, she's been a, she's been a household belief. She has a a heritage of belief, her and Martha. Great people of belief they are. Mary Jo, do you know what I said to Jesus when I walked up in front of this thing tonight? I drove in and saw you standing in front of the fountain. I drove, I was by myself. My family came earlier because I had to write and I didn't want them to, be, they didn't want to be late. But I had to stay as long as possible and I thought I could ride with Terry and Bonnie, but I think they, they were gone. So I drove in. And I, just as I drove in, I saw you standing there and I said, now Jesus... I've not heard Mary Jo's voice in quite a while. Could you, could you have her speak about something tonight? 
So when it came time for prayer and I was wandering around, I said, oh, oh, geez, maybe she could pray. So she prayed, and it's a beautiful prayer. You didn't get all of it. I ran back with my microphone so you could get more of it, and we got the rest of it. But now I've heard her speak again. See, I told him when I, I saw her at the fountain, I said, now, Jesus, could you have her speak? Could you have Mary Jo speak? Tell us a little. Isn't this good? Yeah, Pastor, I've been thinking about how wonderful the kingdom of God operates. And um, while we were praying today, it seemed like we were sort of approaching an area of uh, yeah, God, appreciation God, I pray so. for uh, uh, how the Lord has called us here and for uh, how he's working. And I, I can't help but believe that because of our connection with Brother Ham, That's right. that what he's doing here is uh, far more important and we're able to understand. And that God's calling and election isn't like this world's evaluation. It's the opposite of it. He chooses according to His will. And His choice may look a little bit, it may look or appear unusual yes, sir. to church people or to the church world as a whole. And, yes. and uh, people might say, well... Why would, how could God work with a man like that? Oh. Or how could Jesus work with, work with this one or that one the way he does? And I believe that... Remember my Bible, Jim. I just believe it'd be so easy, you know, to, to miss... Yes, sir. Uh, what, ...what God is doing. It'd just be an easy thing because it's, uh, it's so easily uh, passed by because we can't evaluate can't, we can't evaluate. And I was, I think that some way David and I were approaching you were. this today in prayer. You were. After, well, I'll tell you what happened. It started while Dad Hogue was praying. And while he was praying, Look at that. All of a, yes, I, while he was praying, all of a sudden, I, ha, I had a blessing hit me over the, over the text where uh, it says, that we should have no graven images yeah. before us. Yes. Yeah. And um, I began to appreciate the fact that that we could just look to Jesus for faith. Yes, sir. And we know that we we don't know what He looks like. No, not really. We have no idea what God looks like. And yet we all now, we know, know what, what He's like yeah. because know, of Jesus. That's right. We know what He's like. We know like. what He's like, that's but right. we don't know what He looks like. No. And I was appreciating that and worshiping over that. And then God began to take me into an area of um, appreciation for Jesus helping me when I was a boy. Touches my heart again. Yes. In my childhood. And I began to, I began to wonder how I was born to Christian parents. Yeah. I began to wonder about that. Mm -hmm. Jesus, how did I end up with a mom and dad like I have? <laughs> how did it happen? Out of the, the millions in the world, and a, a big, this is a big place. How did it happen this way? And then I began, as we continued to pray and praise the Lord, um, we began to appreciate the fact that we were just where Jesus wants us to be. Yes. Church number six. Yes, yes. And, and uh, here I have everything I need. Everything. Yes. I like no I good do thing. too. I have everything I need. God, God has met. And we began met. to see, yes. I began to see in prayer and I, I, can't, I can't explain it very well, but I began to see, Dave and I began to see in prayer as Jesus took us up. We began to see that if we just have Him, oh, we just have, it's just so wonderful just to have Him, to know that He loves us. Yes, sir. He's forgiven us. Yes, sir. We're His. Yes, sir. If we don't have anything, if we just have Him, we yes, have sir. everything we need. It's the truth, Steve. And it was, a, it was such a joy till uh, I don't know how to explain it except I was just thrilled with with how God has been so good to us. And for Jesus to speak to you about this and how he came to you and, and he, you got his hand like that, yes, walked sir. with him. Yes, sir. Why? Uh, yes, sir. These things are important. And one, one reason I know they're important is because the Holy Spirit will bear witness to that. That's right. God will say, I did yes. that. Yeah, God said, I, I, I did that. I'm in that. And that's one thing. That's one thing that makes... 
Now, this that, work here. No, no, that touches that, that's me your heart. before you right. get to that. Yes, that's one thing that makes this work here so precious. Oh, God. So, I believe, important. Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit is leading. And the Holy Spirit called his servant here yes. to pastor these people, to shepherd these people. Oh, Jesus, we and, need to hear. And somehow, as it's all connected with Brother Ham, I don't know. Oh, yeah. It's, well, we were sent under apostolic authority. Yes. Even as under the apostles of old, we were sent under apostolic authority. Yes. Even as the apostles of old were sent, we were sent under yes. sin of God. That's the whole key to it. And the whole work of God is to believe on him who's been sent of God. That's what Jesus said. Yes. See, so that makes what he's given to us so thanks. simply that he has written our name down in the book of life, oh. in the roll of the living. Yes, sir. In heaven up Amen. there. Brother Hell said on a page, wide and fair, he wrote Amen. my unworthy name. Glory. We're written down up Dipped there. Dipped the pen in his blood. Yes, sir. And, and whatever happens in this world. Yes, sir. Why, God has a place for us. My brother was talking to me on the telephone. And he said, Stephen, you know, I believe that you have rubies in your mansion, in your windows. Oh, mercy. Why? Something happened to me when he said it. <laughs> Happens to me now. Rubies Why, in the windows I of his God mansion. God told me there are rubies in my windows. Glory. Why? I said, Bruce, I got to crying. I said, praise God. I said, I believe I have rubies in my windows. Well, he got to crying on the other end. Oh. He said, I feel the presence of Jesus when oh, you said that. Hallelujah. And we had such an experience together on the telephone, praising God over Thank you, how wonderful heaven is. And that uh, after, after we have suffered a while and after we've been perfected and after the race is over, why, Jesus has heaven waiting Amen. for all of us. And we may not have much here, but I tell you, he has an awful oh, lot waiting so over good. there. Oh, and you? Mother Barr saw it. Yes, sir, she saw it. She saw it. Yes, she, sir. She saw the rewards of the saints she sure when did. she was over there on the edge of the oh, river. Oh, Steve. Jesus showed her her yep. daddy, her yep. mother first. Yes, sir. She said, Mother, I want you to see something. I yeah. want you to look right over here. Uh -huh. Keep looking. Yeah. And she just looked, and she saw somebody coming in a white robe. Oh, and her Steve. mother walked right up there oh. across the river. said her mother was beautiful and oh. had a beautiful smile. Oh, and glory. Looked at Yes, sir. Jesus, Jesus said, now keep looking. I there's a witness. Yes, hallelujah. Glory. I said, there's somebody else I want you to see. Yes, sir. Just keep looking right yes, over sir. here. Yes, sir. Here came her daddy up. Amen. And her daddy walked up in a beautiful white Jesus, robe we, looking at her. Oh, glory. He said, now there's something else, mother. Keep looking. Yes, sir. And she said, she looked over here, and here came a little one about this big. Oh, so my. Big. Who and was it was that? her little sister. He oh, died years Jesus. before. Glory. She was standing there in a beautiful Amen. white robe. Amen. Thank and you, then Jesus. here comes Moses up. Oh, my And she saw Moses. And then David came up, and she saw David. Oh, dear. He said, and then he said, now look over here. Oh. And he showed her the throne. Oh. She said, I saw the throne. And he says, now I want you to look right over here. Uh -oh. And when she looked over there, she said, oh, gracious. Because she said, I see, oh, Jesus, there are the rewards of the saints. <laughs> right. And she said, oh, children, if you, if you can see what Jesus <laughs> has waiting for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Glory to Thank you, God. Jesus. That's so sweet. Glory to Thank God, you, Mother. Jesus. Oh, you're talking mom's language now. <laughs> Mm. Oh, Savior, have mercy on me. Yeah, yeah, you sure have, Mother. Yes. Boy, when he started down that line, talking yes. about Mother Barr, what she <laughs> saw, she knew that was for her, too. Yes. It surely is, Mother. Oh. John and I are going to twiddle our toes in the water. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Glory <laughs> to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, I'm excited with you. I'm excited because it never ends. Yeah, it never ends. Yes. No end to it. And that's why I keep preaching to people. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Jesus, why can't they hear us? Yes. Yeah, no, we'd be, well, you keep preaching. Somebody will. Glory be to God. Oh, Lord, we won't have to run here and there and there. Yes, and that's right. Like in the days no of Noah. No end, no separation. Yeah. Yes. No tears. Yes, yes. that's right. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. She's like a young woman. 
Yeah. People down here, like in days of Noah, what she's describing is heaven itself, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, and there's joy that reigns supreme, no night there. Glory to God, and the gate never closes. Thank you, Jesus. It's reality. I never knew that Steve's going to have rubies in his windows. I found out tonight. Boy, it made me wonder about my windows. I said, Jesus. Woo, I hadn't thought about my windows. Glory to God. Well, your brother's something else anyway. He's all fired up. There's a man sent by God down there, sitting down there, and he's got the fire on Bruce. And I don't know. Next time Bruce comes up, we'll have to put ropes on him to hold him down. I'm telling you, be trying to restrain Samson. Glory to God. Thank you. Yes, Helen. Spirit, you are welcome in this place, and look what he's done tonight. Oh, oh I'm excited. It's the truth, Helen. It's the truth. Oh, Jesus, I thank you. Pastor, I know that the community, I know you don't claim to be anything, and I don't think any of us claim to be anything, but oh. I know, I believe the community could, could uh, approach uh, what we were seeing in prayer today, that it would be a wonderful experience. I believe it, Stephen. Yeah. I believe it with all my heart. And that the work of God would not be rejected. No, no. But and God's uh, grace. It'd be I believe the key to that unveiling is in our hands. And yes, touch I've, it. I've been praying. See, it's in our hands, not theirs. Touch my heart. Like I said, if we'd had this victory Sunday, I would see people that I'm missing here tonight that I long to see. See, yes. I'm, I'm lonely for them, and only your joy and your love is keeping me or you from being more lonely than we are because we need every saint here that believes God. We need them all here. And... Uh, but you see, God's helping us. It's not to discourage us, to help us to know that if we'll look to Jesus, and of course, as I was praying, seeing my own need greater than all of yours, and saying, well, Lord, you know, I'm, I'm trusting you. I've been waiting on your voice, and I'm trusting thee and waiting for your leading. In the meantime, I stand on the promises, and that was in Peter's standing. I was talking to Jesus like that. It's probably where many of you... So the Lord's so great to give us this precious time in the Spirit. Who would have ever have known? Brother Helm said we wouldn't have to preach nearly as much if the saints would obey. There'd be less sermons. I have to preach. God's in it. But I wouldn't have to nearly as much if the saints would obey. That's not to get anybody on their feet to preach. We're not supposed to. But see, we haven't had any problem tonight. We've had an open service, free service, and... And we've denied ourselves both ways by getting up and by staying down. And God has witnessed and God is working. God's encouraged us. And we've been able to see each other better than to appreciate each other better than we would have before the service. We've been, our hearts have been enlarged for the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Well, I was so thankful that I was standing looking at you and I was thinking about Sandy standing. I said, oh, Jesus. I want to turn and get her a seat. And when I turn, Pastor Terry had already done that. Isn't that wonderful? So when my ministers anticipate the need, that brings less pressure on me, and that had already been taken care of. So we're thankful. Sandy, I guess we'll have your song. Praise the Lord.
seems to me that in the solemnity of the hour, in the blessedness of his presence, that the song was perfect. That it wouldn't have, wouldn't have been in order for it to have been too jumpy or too much rhythm, but that in the beauty of his presence, that it was the song that we needed. Let us find our rest in thee. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. This offering will go to the regular treasury because uh, we've not been able to catch up. And uh, we've, we've, uh, now our building funds come along fine. That's all reserved for building and all for payback, so we can't touch that. Uh, in the regular fund, we've been hoping to catch up, and you've been giving wonderfully. But we thought tonight for the rest of the summer, except for, unless God leads differently, right. except for the time there's a little trio coming, we're going to switch Wednesday night to Thursday, the second week of, uh, of August. Uh, a little trio from Anderson College. It's my... She my second cousin. Be Ken and Gray. Ken Gray is my first cousin. Uncle Grady's granddaughter, Kelly Lockhart, and her daddy really wanted her to come to this church. So when she called me, I said, "Well, honey." Uh, friend of brother Chitty. He's a friend of. Yes, brother, bro- brother. Ken is a friend. Yes, of friend. Chitty. Well, he was her pastor. Yeah. Brother Chitty was pastor of the Lockharts many, many years ago, and so. Um, he wanted her to come, and so she called, and uh, she's excited. I don't know what she'll run into before she gets here, all through the states, if she tells them she's coming. And I don't know if they'll make it. We just have to see if they make it. You know, they they told things about our Lord, and some people didn't make it to him. Right. They never did. Said terrible things about him. Said he was a devil. Mm-hmm. And he divided the people, mm-hmm. and they and he said they'll talk about you that way. So I don't know what she's going to face when she comes. But if she makes it, and a little trio makes it, then I want all of you here, and we'll want to love them and greet them. Yes. And if they want to talk about Anderson College, uh, we've got a lot of Anderson College graduates in this audience, including myself. <laughs> we'll all stand, let ourselves be known, and be thankful yes. for our education. And uh, we'll, we'll love them like we're supposed to do. And um, we'll just do our best. But that's not sure how to be. Probably they'll have every song all laid out and their, all, their little sayings between it. And we, we like for people not to lay it out and just open up their hearts like Dan did last time. Just say, you know, just start talking, Dan. Let God talk through you. But you see, God would want us to listen and love. I'm telling you, way ahead of time. Except for that, our Wednesday night offerings will try to help the treasury get back in shape. Dolly uh, paid everything. She'd been holding back. Uh, she held back a week or two, and she didn't let me know. I, I, she put it down there, but I didn't see it. I'd been telling you we were about 3000 She finally just paid it all, and it amounts to about five or 6000 in the, in the red. So I knew it was time to, to make some moves to catch up. So we... Pastor Terry, we've been trying to get him to finish Dad and Mom's house. He'll be off the payroll at least till September 1st. And then we made some other moves. That's 1500 and he's so wonderful. He's, he's already got work and will, you know, go somewhere else to do work. And I made a few other moves, and so I'm trusting you'll respond with me on that. We'll have her all shaped up. I said, I'd like to start to fall clean of debt. Clear, clean. Oh, me. <laughs> just thought of something. I said we wouldn't take an offering unless God led otherwise. Mm-hmm. Well, I meant that. I just remembered. I just remembered that I got a note Wednesday night that told me a wonderful thing. Joanne's been selling cakes and saving her money, Joanne Ball, Josephine, I called her sometime, and she's going to get her money together. But there was no way for her husband to get her money together because they just didn't have it, as many of you don't. And uh, what I'm amused at is I'm already into it. 
But, yeah, the Lord's with me. She wrote me the letter, and she said in her letter, we're, I don't know, she just wanted me to know. She said that Genial enjoyed the waiting. Chuck told me that he thought it was, that Genial thought it was three of the best days of his life. Genial's never been before. We got Christian people that carry so many burdens and have so much in their background that they can't hardly make it sometime through waiting. Chuck, I mean, uh, Genio was up at five and at six, and he never missed a morning mm-hmm. or anything. He he drank it in lock, stock, and barrel, and knew God was there. Yeah. I told Brother Him that Genio would know in any group of people in the world whether God was there or not, yes, sir. because he's seen the glory in the country churches yes. when he was a boy and a young man. He knows what when God's work. He knows He's there. He knows it. He knows man's other anointing or not. He knows that. Yes. He had three of the greatest days of his life. Now, I, it's not that I want you to talk about this. I just want to lead up to something. She said in her note. She said, Pastor. She said. Uh, I would put Genial's name in, but I don't know what to do. But she said, I believe someone has the money. And Ann was reading this to me on the way home. When she said that, the Holy Spirit witnessed to my heart that someone had the money. It touches your heart now that there's money not to hurt anybody, but someone or ones. And I knew Chuck and I knew other men in this church might want to help Genio go. And so what I did the next day, I put Genio down. We dropped one or two anyway. I added him down. He was number 35. I said, J- Joe, you tell Genio that his pastor is putting him on there by faith. Uh, the reason I can't offer the money from the church is because I'm already into it by 10000 Brother and Sister Chitty, and I've been working this way and this way and this way, trying to get together without burdening anybody out here. I've been trying to just raise that silently, trying to put that together silently, see. And God's helping me. I had not got it yet, but I'm halfway there. I see, I haven't said anything about that one. There have been people who couldn't go who said, here, I want to pay for somebody because they had it. But nobody said that this time, so we're just hanging on. Because we know that to say too much sometimes to say too much. But the Lord did tell me that we had it for Genio. He told me that. Jesus told me that. So uh, I wanted to announce that so we'd all start praying. Now, if you don't have it, you pray that those that have it will give it so we can have Genio's money, not later than August 15th. Tina told me she wouldn't charge him a dime extra even if we didn't have his 983 in. She'll not do it. She'll make sure his ticket doesn't raise at all. That's what she told me. So, folks, what do you think about Genio Ball going on this trip? Praise the Lord. Amen. I thought you'd be excited. Yes, sir. I said, oh, Lord. That's what I said. <laughs> I told Ann, I said, honey, God touches my heart. I've got to call Joe just as soon as I got home and put him on the list by faith. I want you to know I'm doing better. There's a man who wants to sell us trees today at a real bargain, and I, I turned him down. I just want all you to be encouraged. It may be a little bit <laughs> concerned with me. I turned them down. So I called Steve. God gave us a prayer burden. Daddy said, son, there's two hundred and something, twenty-five dollars worth of trees, and uh, we can get them for $175. And I said, Daddy, he, he knew if God was in it because it's 20 some odd trees. The one we got now from the same wonderful man. See, that's a very expensive price. When they did my house, it was $1,000, and uh, I don't have half that many trees. But, but you see, that was good. I didn't know whether to do it or not. Well, but I said, Jesus, I'll just talk to Steve, see what you say. Jesus said, pray. He said, just check her important. God said, check. Don't buy the trees. Just wait. Tell him you appreciate it and that you hope to buy them at a later time. But no trees today. See, he was helping me, wasn't he? Now, I'm really watching what I'm doing. I'm doing the best I can. I, oh, I'm just a, But you see, with all this, the Lord said, put him on the list. Somebody's got the money. And his wife is up over there. Yes, it's very important because he's one of the finest of men. Yes, sir. Oh, isn't this great? Yes, sir. That's right. He was at a school yesterday. He came in and he said, Well, Joe, I guess I've done my good deed for today. 
And I said, well, honey, what was that? And he said, well, I was at a school and said, this little boy asked me if I had a nickel. So I told him no. He said, well, do you even have a penny? And Jill says, no, I told him no. But he said, I got inside and I got to thinking, a man would give me $2,000 and I can't even give a little boy a penny. So I went back and gave him a quarter. <laughs> see, that tells me an awful lot about what God's already doing. And you see, I'm not sure if the plaza was where the Lord witnessed to you of how he was wooing Genial at that time. Was it at the Plaza Hotel? It was March the 10th, yes. 1975. Yes, I believe it was. And you told me that was important enough to write down, and I've never forgotten my heart that day. I get the witness now. Yes. So I, I am so thankful that even when it looks so dark, oh, the Lord. That's my that by God's grace I've hung on. And see, I think I've waited 10 years for him to go to a wedding. And I don't remember if 71 was the first trip I went on or not, but you see, I've had such a longing every trip for him to go. Two years ago, he pushed me aside and said, you know, I don't want to go. There's no way I'll go. Yeah. Yeah. Two years ago. Two years ago when yeah. I went on the, well, not two years ago, February of 80. See, oh. that was when I really felt in my heart he was supposed to go, really felt it. Yes, yes. And, of course, I felt it so much this time. Yes. And, uh, well, this if I'm so dreaming, let me dream on. Glory to God. Amen. Because oh, I'm so thankful. Oh, yeah. I know I'm probably not thankful enough or yeah, grateful God enough, but I want to be. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I really want to be. And I'm, I just praise him for the victory Amen. and the promises he gives Amen. us. Amen. He, he did it, yeah. Yes. Uh, more Almost uh, 12 years ago, yes. uh, by God's grace, when your mother and, I, and the three of us were coming from a meeting somewhere. Green my, Valley. My God old Morgan. Comet car. One of the gears were tearing up in it, but it still ran. Yes, sir. And we were coming together, and God came down in that car and said we could claim this man for the kingdom of God mm -hmm. right in that car with Mother. Yes, and she's yes, never she forgotten is. it because yes, it's so wonderful, and that car is hardly worse to tell you. Oh. So I'm thankful. I'm oh. thankful because, you see, I can see what it's done for him already. Oh, it's so sweet. That's so wonderful. Because, you see, all day yesterday, the cat, the, well, Monday, the devil kept saying, he wouldn't go get his passport picture made. He Just thought. because he told you he was going to go if somebody paid his way. Now, you know, because, <laughs> see, I had used this approach to him. What, because some precious person in church had said to me, would you go if his way were paid? And I said, oh, sure, there's no doubt. And then I thought, you better check this out. Yeah. So I asked him, what would you do if they called you from the church to tell you your way was paid? Well, I'd just have to get me a ticket and go along. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Well, Judy Brophy was the house, and we just about dropped through the floor because that was such a sure. such a turn see sure. from what it was of February of 80. That's so wonderful. But I have shared with him how people have been praying for this miracle. Yes. Oh, it's good. And when I got off the phone with you, of course, yes. I was crying. I said, Daniel, you're to go to Israel. Well, he's taking his shoes off to go to bed, and you wouldn't have known I said any more than it's dark outside. And he came in and set his shoes down, and he said, where's the money coming from? Sure. And I said, listen, honey, I don't know. Yeah. But when Pastor said that God touched his heart on someone, that's enough for me. That's right. Jesus, yeah, Jesus said we had it. Because you see, for every, well, several people have been praying for this miracle to happen even before I finally pressed through to write you. There were people praying for a miracle to happen. I didn't know any come. of this. I right. didn't know anything about it at all. I can't even remember anything being said to me until she read me the note Sunday night and the Holy Spirit said, he's to go. The money is here. I will bring it in through my people. I'm thankful. Isn't that I'm so thankful. Glory to God. And it's more, more exciting for me this time, even before this happened. Oh, I said, when you, you shared, there was more, it should be more excitement within those who were yeah, going than yeah. if you'd never been there. See, that's what With I Jeannie had going, it'll be for all of us like the first trip. Because well, I, you see, Jeannie, Jeannie told me that 
she screamed and screamed when she heard it. <laughs> I shared it with Vicky tonight, and Vicky got goosebumps all over. So well, you see, I know. I know within oh, my heart it's in yes. order. He, he sees more than nine out of ten people sees on any trip. You told you know, me that several years that. ago. I so. told you that a long time yes, ago. Yes, sir, you sure did. He, I said he sees more than nine. He'll, t he'll tell you about it. It's wonderful. Yeah, well, see, this is the one thing I told him last night at Max and B's. I said, now, there's one requirement I have of you on this trip. I said, I want you to be sure and remember everything so we can write it down. He said, well, that won't be a problem. See, so I'm thankful That's that he has wonderful. this retention. Yeah, we, I guess Chuck, I don't know what Chuck's going to do, but it'll well, be good. I wanted Jill to make a phone call to Chuck to tell him. I've been trying well, to get him to do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm thankful. I'm thankful yeah. for the way Jesus is working. He's working. And God's for working. what I feel in my heart. Did you know that I do not know? I don't want anybody to feel buffeted because if Jesus were to tell me about this with anybody, I call about someone else whom I'd like to go, whom if I'd name them, you'd be very stirred up, not in this church. And the Holy Spirit would not release me to make any more offers. After I offer for Brother and Sister Chitty, and I have the responsibility for my own group here, tried to take that off for Brother Ham, and you've done wonderfully to help me. But I couldn't offer anymore. But, but you see, the Holy Spirit led. I couldn't make that. I had not to do that. But God said through my daughter's voice where I read in your note, he is to go. And see, this is very important for the kingdom of God. Not that. only for Gino's life, that. but for other lives. And but it you means see, whatever. the one thing, Pastor, that I want more than anything is to go expecting nothing. It just don't just require anything. Right, no, because you just, see so just, many of us might go saying, okay, this means genial salvation. You know, this is where it's going to happen. That's in God's hands. Right. No, we don't, but we, I do remember the one thing you mentioned from the pulpit, and I don't know how many people remember this, but you said one of these days genial ball will walk across the road a saved that's man. That's what I said. That's saved. what I said. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. And when I shared this with Jim White, the Lord really witnessed to him that this is what was going to happen. Glory See, so God. I'm thankful. That is so, good. so I've got a great promise to hang on to, and I'm thankful for so it. That's so Praise good. the Lord. Hallelujah. This offering tonight, and that's coming. You, you report to me or to the ministers if God's touched your heart about helping him to go. But tonight, we just want to help with some utilities that are way high this summer over the summer heat. Dolly told me today that they were enormous this Sunday. If you know what our electric bill is, you'd say, thank God that's not my personal bill, but it is our bill. So we give tonight to help on the local scene. Jesus, sanctify this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Amen.